Hey everybody, John from IPT Transmissions. Today we're building a 5EAT Subaru. These are found in Outback, Legacy, and Tribeca. In another video, we took this transmission apart and it's gonna be linked in the description down below. Let's get into this. First, we're gonna put all our rubber on our clutch pistons. and put the drums together. Turn spring, balance piston, or snap ring. We're going to compress all these later. This is our high low reverse drum. And as a footnote, <coughs> these drums that needed to be machined, we machined so we can install our extra clutch setups where they're needed. And if this isn't something you've done before, you notice the bags in the rebuild kit will tell you what seal is for what. So these are for the front brake. That's these. And most of these have balance pistons in them. And what these do, there's a seal on the outside, but none on the inside. So when these things get going real fast, you know, when you're five, six, seven, and eight speed autos, um, a lot of times you have these drums turning real fast while the clutches aren't applied and centrifugal oil underneath it could start to apply the clutch. So what this does is it also has oil. So the oil that centrifuges to the outside, balances the other piston and, and keeps it pushed back down. Now here we have four seals and they're all different. These two are self-explanatory. These other two are fairly close in size. But if you look in this piston, you have a larger diameter and a smaller diameter, slightly. Or a smaller diameter one. It's gonna go to the top. And the larger diameter is gonna to go towards the bottom. These things are um, sometimes a little bit difficult to get in the drum just because you have the, the tension of all four of these seals fighting against you. Move everything up, good. I like to move them around so there's a little bit more lube. Take them over to the spring compressor. And sometimes we can push them right in. Thank you. 
Same thing, we have a balance piston here to help with centrifugal supply. And that actually becomes more important if you, you um, have a performance application where you're, where you're operating in an RPM range that, that's kind of higher than, than what the stock unit is designed for. And now we're going to compress these things down a bit. Showed this tool in other videos, but so you could do without it, but it's a real pain. It's best to have the right stuff. And that you want to make sure this thing, your snap rings are in all the way. And you could do that by moving them back and forth, all right? lower here and again we're gonna make sure that it's seated by doing that Now, if you look down in here, on most drums, you're going to have little raised areas here, all right? And that's going to um, make sure your snap ring stays seated no matter what, because these also, with enough RPMs, they might want to try and centrifuge out as well. And I saved the front brake for last because it's a bit of a pain. Not so much the piston part, but compressing it is a little awkward. And this is another clutch pack that's uh, often damaged. We address that by getting an extra clutch in here. If you go from two clutches to three clutches, you effectively increase the torque capacity by 50%. I mean, it sounds simple, but it is kind of linear like that. Now you see they have two stands on, on this piston that engage into these, two, into these two holes, and that's, you know, obviously to keep it from turning while it tries to apply. And we have another one of these little slinky return springs and a retainer. All right, this is a little bit of a pain. It doesn't really um, fit into the spring compressor correctly, so we got to hit it at a little bit of an angle. Let's see who's getting as far back as possible. We're going to put this, which is just a bearing race for something. Don't know what. And we got to kind of get these not straight down on it, but off to the side. in there all the way. 
least attention. All right, now we're going to put together the clutch drums with IPT's special components to get more clutches in here. All right, in this clutch pack, we're going from six clutches to seven clutches. In this clutch pack, we're going from four clutches to six clutches. In this clutch pack, we're going from five clutches to seven clutches. And here, we're going from two clutches to three clutches. And off camera, I went and I put these together ahead of time, checked the clearances, so those are all going to be good. As with anything automatic transmission, you're typically alternating clutch plates and steel plates so you get up to the top then you're going to have a pressure plate and a snap ring we want to line our clutch teeth up next on the direct drum it's pretty much the same thing Steel plate, clutch plate, etc. Top pressure plate, snap ring. We line up our clutch teeth. Next, high low reverse. And finally, our input clutch drum. And we've had special parts made, and in conjunction with machine work, this enables us to get all these extra clutches in, which is really going to increase your torque capacity. All right, now we're going to go ahead and get our pump assembly together. Move in here. Pump gears. Guess you kind of want to pack it with a little grease so it pulls a vacuum and starts sucking fluid up right away, at the initial start. And this also. I like to put a little grease because um, the snap ring, uh, I mean snap ring, the um, seal has to be retained in here when we're putting the pump down. And sometimes you have to mess with this a little bit to get it in its groove. Be really careful that it's not sticking up or anything like that. Then we're going to use this. You see we have our pump pressure hole and our pump suction. And that's what we're going to use to try and line this up. We went ahead and changed these washers that are sealing washers on the pump bolts and we're going to put these all in there's long bolts and short bolts they're pretty fairly obvious where they go and there's not a torque sequence per se but kind of 
common sense tighten things down even evenly and the torque spec here is 100 inch pounds Finally, we have to put these two O-rings up here. I'm gonna grease them up a little bit for installation later. Okay, now we're gonna put some of these Torrington bearings on make it a little bit easier when we go to put it back together. Of course in this drum we have a four tang race it sits there. This touring can bear in. There he gets a small one there. Larger one on this side. Now this drum is going to get this thick brace first. And then this Torrington bear. Here we're going to get another bearing race. That one is a three tab. Now we have this other bearing race that goes here. I mean the other bearing that goes here and there is no race. This is a hardened surface on the uh, corresponding piece that it rides on. And this is also a sprag or one-way clutch. Okay, so now our next two components are as follows. The Torrington bearing that goes here. We have a race that goes here. Now we got a couple more bearings left, but those are going to be for a little bit later on in this project. All right, now we're going to put together some of these other components, which is going to make the final assembly a little easier for us. Next, we're going to put the input drum into its shell, and we're going to get the planetary into the shell as well. The snap ring in the right position first. There's two tabs here that we could use to help us. And not all of these type of units have these tabs, but the first thing See now these gears engage into this ring gear here. Now if we're lucky, these tabs will help us out as far as there we go. That's all in together correctly. All right, now we're gonna start working with the final assembly. Starting with putting this bearing race down in the case. These pistons, we uh, took them out, changed the rubber and everything off camera, but you can't see it, obviously, because we're going to be like that. So we have our small set of clutches. Pressure plate goes on top. Right. 
There's no snap ring for this clutch set. So it flies against the um, drum that sits on top of it. Next, we're going to put this on. You remember we put our bearing race here. And we're going to spline that into the first set of clutches. That sound tells us that it's down all the way. Now we're putting this next clutch pack in. And unlike some other units, this cushion spring sits like a cone facing that way. Getting up to the top. And then we're going to finish this off with the pressure plate. We will ball that up a little bit. And also, this is a tight fit, so it doesn't hurt to put a little oil on here, a little on the bearings. Now, what we have is three bolt holes okay so this middle bolt hole is going to be oriented at six o'clock into the transmission and you just got to really gently work this down okay now you see that it's down all the way all right next we're going to put this heavy snap ring in Flat side towards the back, beveled side faces up, and the opening, I like to put at 6 o'clock, but you probably could put it somewhere else if you felt like it. And these are kind of a hump to put in. Once it's in, you want to just give it some light taps to make sure it's fully seated. So next is the clutch piston that we have to put in. So move this up in here. And move up. Well, let's let, let's uh, show you this too. Um, a lot of these things have D rings, but on this transmission you have a lip seal, All right? So if you could see this, it's a lip. Okay, so this lip always has to face fluid pressure when you're putting them back together, and fluid pressure goes on the back side of this piston. And a lot of things with lip seals are tough to put together and they're special tools, but this isn't one of them. This kind of goes right in. You gotta rock it back and forth some. We have a bearing here. We have a bearing that sits up here. And now we have to put the return spring in. So that just sits down in there. And this is another thing that could be a little difficult to assemble. This is under spring tension. So you gotta push down and seat the snap ring at the same time. The thing is you get it started and then you could usually start walking it around. Okay, now as you see, this is 
fully seated in there now. And now we can put our clutches in. All right, next to our low reverse clutches, we have this cushion spring, and that's gonna sit like a bowl. put our pressure plate down right on top of it. Moving right along, now our direct drum has splines on it and these have to spline into those low reverse frictions. That sound tells you it's in all the way and you can see this just sticks up just a hair above the end of that support. Next we're going to put our high low reverse drum, sun gear one-way clutch assembly and again turns counterclockwise locks clockwise so this I try and get a finger in here and here walk it down and that is all the way down Next, this is planetary and again when this is down, you can see this is going to be slightly below this surface. Next is our drum assembly. And that's the sound of it hitting home. All right, there's different ways to do this, but my preference is I put a little assembly lube and I kind of glue this gasket in place. I'm gonna have a dowel pin here and here at the center. So now I get down in here I try and put it down all together. And I hold this component down with my fingers. Okay, so that's pretty much all the way down. Now this bolt with the washer has to go here. I kind of marked it, but it's not showing up too well. Okay, and the spec that I like to use here is 30 foot-pounds. And we showed you this in a previous video, but this is the special tool here that we use.
All right, next we're going to put our pinion in. Oil in there. And remember, there's a shim underneath this to set your pinion depth. going with our P50 first. This is going to center everything. And we're going to do the same, same thing here, 30 foot-pounds of torque. Very important, let's not forget this little piece. It's an oil delivery sleeve that allows your front seal to train back from where it is all the way through the differential. And it, falls back down into the pan. All right, there's a couple things on the front diff. We took this apart, checked all the bearings. We got it back together now. We're gonna change these seals. And what I like to do, moisten them up a little bit, and use spit, and use brake clean. I like brake clean because it kind of melts the metal in there. I mean, melts the rubber to the And this tool is going to drive it down perfectly flush and in proper position every time. Repeating this on the other side. And make sure you change these things. These things are always going to leak on. All right, something to take note of. Let's see if we can get this on camera. These seals are directional. So you're gonna see little scallops in there that face a certain direction. So you're gonna to wanna to put the new seal in based on what you took out, all right? Because otherwise these seals kind of burn up if they're um, facing in the wrong direction. So you have a left and you have a right. All right, next comes the front seal. And this installation tool isn't for a Subaru, it's for something else, but it, it still kind of works. Now, I like to put Loctite on front seals usually. You know, some people might disagree agree or do it differently, but that's kind of what's worked for us over the years. We want to clean up our surfaces and then we're going to put some silicone on all of this. Okay, we want to set it down gently and these bolts all come in from the back side. Okay. 
And whomever pulled this out shorted us out of some bolts. So I'm going to put in what I have and then we'll put some more in later. But obviously we want them even so the silicone can set up properly. So we have three different ones with this special socket on the bottom. You know, and then obviously you want to take a quick look to make sure it's squeezed out evenly all the way around so we know we're not going to have any leaks. Finally, our lockup O-ring needs to go on. And we'll move on to the rest of the assembly. All right. I'm going to take note of how this goes. There's a little step here that acts as a seat for the spring. And it's got to engage into this hole. And we put it onto the pin. This back part of the spring has to sit under here. Alright, so then we put it in park. That's going to go in. Next, put the speed sensor in. And this is also something that goes in specifically. You have a little recess here and a bolt hole. So now we have the sensor that has that and a little plate that sits underneath it. So they're both going to engage into there. wire has to go behind here. This goes through this hole up here. All right, so now when this gets put back together, it can't interfere with anything. All right. Next is this transfer gear. And we have a shim that needs to go under here. center differential in. All right, next we have to put in our output shaft and output gear. We have a little washer here that has to get glued on. And our all-wheel drive clutch pack, and this is how it has to sit. One pressure plate, clutch steel, clutch steel, clutch steel, etc. Then there's two plates on top and this metal piston sleeve. And this could be a little frustrating the first several times you do it. So as you put the tail housing on, this stuff sometimes wants to try and come apart on you. It's kind of why we like to glue this piece in a little bit with some transmission assembly lube. And this stuff melts down and, and disappears as soon as it gets hot. So it's not like you're going to have anything damaging going inside your transmission. 
And the same thing here. I just put a little grease so this gasket doesn't try and move out of place. And these gaskets are metal shims, so if you ever tighten it down and have to take it back apart, this is a one-shot deal. I'd recommend changing the gasket. There's also two different ones in the kit based on what tail housing you have, what year it is. So you're going to have to make sure you match it up. Now in the tail housing, there's several shims that need to go in here. And this could vary, but this one has got two shims for the transfer gear. And it's got two shims for the output shaft. An easy way to locate it is the other half of the uh, parking pen is here. And obviously this and this are going to be what centers it. And if this doesn't go completely flush, you have something going wrong, like a clutch popped out or you need to um, take it apart and, and look at what went wrong. Otherwise, the thing's going to get crushed and have a permanent all-wheel drive condition. Work specification on these is 20 foot pounds. Right now, we want to air check everything to ensure that we have hydraulic integrity inside the transmission. And you have to cover one hole as you do the other hole. Next, we're going to install our wiring harness. out to the side. We also want to move this out to the side so we don't squash it under the valve body. And let's see if we could take a shot of this after it's on. This valve has to engage into the shifter linkage. So you do that and that will show you that everything is working. All right, now we're going to have black colored bolts and gold colored bolts. The black bolts are going to hold the valve body to the case in every location. And the gold ones are going to be the ones that go through the filter with the exception of one gold one that goes here, because it's a little bit longer. Once again, torque spec is 80 inch pounds. So this is kind of important where you route the wiring harness because it comes real close to that where you're putting the pan on. If you route it wrong, you could crush it when you're 
putting the pan on and that's definitely going to set a code and for these pans i like to do silicone there's gaskets available but they came from the factory with silicone and i find that they seal up better like that and now we're getting ready to button this thing up and when you do this you kind of it's best to go in at an angle like this lay it down And this goes for any transmission. Always make sure that your <coughs> drain plug is tight. And this is another point worth noting. There's a sensor that lives here if you're going to take one of these transmissions out, take the sensor out first. Because what happens is people get up here with an extension and a swivel to get either the starter bolts or the bell housing bolts, and it snaps that sensor. So when I have somebody sending me one of these here, I always tell them to send it without the sensor. And we're about done. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell.